Hey guys, this is Chris with Servin' and Swervin', and today we're going to be checking out Cahokia Mounds. I'm obviously on my motorcycle, so it'll be kind of like a realistic tour so you can see what it's like and what to expect. But then I also hop off my motorcycle and go into the museum. So we turn left, here's the museum. Then I'll show you guys Monk's Mound, I'll show you guys Woodhenge, and we'll kind of take it as it goes. Um, I really enjoyed it, and I'm from St. Louis, so... Uh, it's not something I really checked out as much as I should have, but uh, I'm going to check it out some more, and I'm glad I did. It's a very interesting spot. I made sure to really research the Cahokia Mounds because, you know, I don't want to make this video and disrespect the people that were here because this is a historic site, not just for the community, for the area, for the whole world. That's why this is a state historic site, but it's also recognized by UNICEF as like a world national site. It's right here on the Great River Road, which is the Mrs which follows the Mississippi River. And so where we're at, where Cahokia is, it's the meeting of about three main rivers. So uh, there's this spot, Cahokia or the Cahokia Mounds, was suggested to be like one of the biggest trade ports, you know, in the world at that time. It actually was the largest prehistoric city in, I mean, north of Mexico. So the largest prehistoric city north of Mexico. It was bigger than London at the time. So this city was huge, and a lot of people think it was a big trading post for other places. And that's why you here you'll find like copper, and you'll find other things that come from like Lake Superior and other places. But when you hey. walk in the museum, it's really cool because it shows you other places, you? Um, other world heritage okay, sites definitely. that you could actually check out. Because I didn't realize, you know, I'm learning as I go, and that's why I'm doing this channel. But the world heritage sites are like the coolest places to check out because that has like all the major points you know and this area is a very important part and actually uh, a fun fact Cahokia or the Cahokia Mounds was called the Sun City and that's why it's like uh, all about the city of the sun but where we're at here in southern Illinois like I don't know who remembers this but in 2017 there was the solar eclipse where was the best spot to watch it at St. Louis we're actually like right in southern Illinois there's going to be another eclipse coming in 2024 best spot to watch it right by St. Louis as well. So it's called the Sun City and that's why they have wood hinge here. It was like a very, uh, like the sun cycles here are very weird. So it's a real cool spot and it's a historic so spot, not just cause it's a city, but it's just like the eclipse, the best spot to see it is from here. Wood hinge is here. Like there's a lot going on here that people don't understand, but this is Cahokia and hopefully we'll explore it and figure some things out. It's cool. You could even sign in here. It shows you the different tools from back in the day to what we use now. They even have a movie going, which I recommend, you know, City of Sun. If you guys are here, make sure you take some time, spend a couple hours, really read as much as you can. Like I said, you could learn a lot about the people that were here before us. Um, the mural described. So they have a lot of paintings to actually show you what the city would have looked like. So Cah the Cahokia Mountains is a big area, and then there's like a small enclosed, or well, a smaller enclosed area, which is called the Stockade, which is one of the biggest stockades which is a reason to believe why this was like a trading post. But here is the uh, the Birdman tablets. They found out like, uh, you know, for through religion and rituals, kind of the Birdman tablet was a big deal to them. And we'll talk about rituals later because also here you find a lot of like mass grave sites that they did like rituals and sacrifices, which, hey, like I said, take the good with the bad. They did a lot of cool stuff. You know, they had a lot of history. See, they had games. You could see like on the main center terrace, that's where they'd have like different skills and games and they actually show us what games they played and tell us what they like to do you know this place is cool because they you know you learn a lot here we you you could um they have different uh they show how they learned it um but they have different recipes for food you could cook from back in the day they have different games you could play where they actually played these games way back in the day so like i said you could learn a lot about the mississippian indian culture it was here from 900 to 1200 and then it like slowly dwindled down here's the canoes they use if you look at that right there there was a canoe um out of wood you know they just uh chop it up burn on the inside and that's how they'd make canoes which i actually want to try to make one you know they use that you know you could use all kinds of wood to do it you could use oak birch you know, I actually want to try to make one of those canoes, to be honest. Just give it a go with today's technology. You know, use some powerful tools. But it's really cool because you can see this is what you call walking through the city. This is what they said it would actually look like if you walked through the city. Where the how far the houses are spaced, you'll see people doing their things. 
family tasks like siblings live next to each other and they would it was like in compounds and then they'd share the things you see we have dogs out here you see how they're uh, cooking the food everyone had their role their job you know this is a really cool city like could you just imagine walking there way back in the day if you could just time travel but i mean like at least through here you kind of can here's a sweat lodge up here which i believe heavily on sauna and steam rooms and stuff and getting those toxins out so it's cool seeing how they did steam rooms because in like all the cultures they did you know like going over there to like italy greece you know the ancient greeks they had their like saunas and steam rooms the native americans it shows they had steam rooms like i said it shows the games that they'd play you know and i'm sure they had like i don't know you know like the i bet like the best person at the game probably had a bigger house and stuff like it's pretty funny and here's who would live on monk's mound here was like their main guy or their leader or their chief they're very in the society they're very uh here it shows right here the lifestyles of the elite upper class and then it shows like the commoners and then you'd have like the warriors different things like it was definitely a societal caste system which we're pretty much in today and they said you could see who was who by the different stuff they had so something rare here like say you wanted to have like nowadays you'd have like diamonds and gold and stuff then you'd have seashells because they'd come from the gulf of mexico and you'd have uh like i mentioned copper because copper is actually from lake superior and then the commoners would have like the stuff that's from the area like uh i don't know granite you know stuff like that um yeah so here's those different recipes i was talking about you know so this way you could cook the same stuff that they cooked way back in the day which that would be fun to do because like i said this community was uh they weren't hunter gatherers anymore it was very much an agricultural community um and yeah so um you learn a lot see you can see like the what it would have looked like but we have little movies that are going up here where you could watch um the pictures and they have different islands that has like a category it'll say like waterways shapes of mounds and then you go to that little island and you read all about it you know so it's really cool how this museum is put together and i just hope they get more funding it talks about the stockade which is like i said they have no reason to believe that cahokia was under attack so the stockade had to have been something different so i think it was like trading because uh no one was attacking the cahokian or the mississippian people actually and then here's a wood hinge which was great for their calendar they used it for rituals um they know how to do like the what is it the summer or the autumn equinox or i don't know some stuff um it shows the difference in the differences in the cities from cahokia to st louis you know the population density um the skills the artwork the crafts you know uh it's really cool and like i said there's the main site where the cahokia mounds are which i would then there's also going to be other sites around here like 20 miles away that had like which they call the outer cahokias but yeah like i said here they call it uh you know the mississippi river one of the main highways of the past you know so all, the mississippi and right here in cahokia we're in what they call like the flood plains so you know you'd have different streams or different marshes and whatnot which would cause a lot of different animals good fishing good uh streams where you could go to different areas uh and really travel and trade so that's why i think this spot had a lot to, i don't know i'm a i am I don't know so anyway so it talks about the city and you learn a lot i actually want to go back there like today or tomorrow just to learn more and not shoot a video but anyway so after the museum we're gonna go outside because they have all kinds of trails and the cool thing is you could ask the information desk for uh like uh, they have a tape player and you just put on the headphones and then you just walk the trail and it'll point out the different spots to see the different places so that way you could have your own little private trail so uh here i am you know just walking the trail it's a good exercise so if you're in the area looking for a hike come here and then a lot of people work out here so the grand plaza is like that spot where they were playing the games at see look at this this is awesome to see there would be monks mound the grand plaza different mounds for different sites it really gives you a picture see the stockade that was the stockade wall i was surrounded and we actually get to see the stockade how it was made back in the day so i guess they took a plane ride or a helic well they found it in like the 1930s so i guess they must have took a plane ride up and they saw how the soil had like a little line around it like a unnatural line so they thought maybe there had to be something. Let's so see what I'm, I'm saying. I'm going to go see Monk's Mound right now, which is the most noticeable mound. But like I said, it's really cool. Looking at this, it's just a field. But one time there were a bunch of different huts. And this is a big village. And one of the biggest 
communities in America at the time, you know. It's really cool to check out. I'm glad I saw the museum. The museum was awesome to kind of learn about the lifestyles. And it was, like I said, it was a lot better than I thought, you know. Uh, a lot of realistic uh, figurines and, you know, just uh, a lot of good history on how they lived and what they kind of, what life was like back then. So really cool to check out. And like I said, an easy checkout. Doesn't cost any money. I'm gonna leave a donation. But I'm like, uh, if you're from St. Louis and haven't checked it out yet, you might as well. It's just real cool. And hey, it's a nice workout. All right, so now we're here at Monk's Mound. Like I said, a lot of people use it to exercise, but this spot has a lot of significance. It's a really cool place. Um, so I'm kind of going to read some facts off too while we're checking out Monk's Mound. So among the largest features are an enormous central plaza encompassing nearly 40 acres and numerous immense earthworks. And the major one is Monk's Mound, and that's built between 900 and 1200 AD. And it's the largest prehistoric earthen structure in the Western Hemisphere the largest prehistoric earthen structure in the western hemisphere it rises 100 feet covers more than 14 acres and contains more than 25 million cubic feet of earth so people had to build this with their own soil to make it and here's where the leader stayed at and he had a big house at the top of monk's mound in the back so even monk's mound was big but then um on top of monk's mound he had a big building up there too which was really tall and really high up which you can tell from some of the materials that were at the top so this is where the main guy would be at and like i said i talked about sacrifices right so i'm like uh you know it makes me picture that one movie that like uh what was his name uh mel gibson directed uh apocalypto or uh, you know whatever it's called um uh, apocalypto but like where they went up to the top and had like rituals, they were like cutting off people's heads and stuff, which they didn't do that here. But one thing I wanted to talk about, so they had uh, three different sites where they found between the ages were 15 to 25 year old females. And one of the sites had like 50 people. The other site had like 30 people. The other side had like 22 and 19. And they were mass graves with just these 15 to 25 year old young women. So you could tell they were doing like sacrifices and 30% 30, 30 of the people that they found in these mass graves were not from the area because they could tell who was from the area and who wasn't. So they had these mass graves where 30% where of the people weren't from the area and they were like all women. So you could tell it was like sacrificial and really weird stuff going on there, which isn't cool at all. But hey, you know, they had ceremonies and rituals and different things going on. So I guess they take the good with the bad. But yeah, we're on top of Monk's Mound which I'm sure if we would have tried to come up here, you know, 3,000 years ago, we'd probably get murdered. But yeah, and you can see some of the stockade wall from down here. You see that little wooden building? That's what we're going to check out next because, uh, like I said, not all of the Cahokia Mounds, the big city that they lived in, was protected by the stockade. So why would some people be outside of the stockade and some people be inside of it? You know, so it's weird and it's cool and you learn a lot about it. But yeah, here's how that building would have looked. Pretty sweet, right? And then inside, the main guy would have lived there and, you know, a cool thing, Monk's Mound. So yeah, it's pretty sweet to be on top of, on top of here. You get to see a lot of the area, what it would have looked like, um, what it would have looked like to look outside and around from on top of Monk's Mound. It's a nice workout too, but yeah, cool spot, very uh, historic. Like I said, not, Cahokia was the largest city and, Cah and Monk's Mound was the largest earthwork. So a lot of history going on here. A lot of good trading posts and the archaeologists like i said they've only excavated one percent of the area so that's why i think they're trying to get different funding to make it like a national park rather than a state park and a world heritage site so they could get more money so they could dig up more and find out different things like they still don't know exactly why the uh mississippian people left you know but like i said the Cahokia mounds was one big spot then like 20 miles away they had 
what they called Greater Cahokia, where they had different little mounds and stuff like that too. So, which is pretty cool because this was like, you know, they had su they literally had suburbs. You know, pretty sweet to think about. And like I said, this place is just, you know, has so many different facts you could read yourself if you're really interested into it or look it up on your own. Because I definitely strongly recommend it. And this is, you know, and use your imagination with this too, you know. And we're going to see some of the stockade wall, which is really cool to check out. It's very neat. I'm really happy with that. See, like I said, see that wall? That would be the stockade. And then the city would be around that. And then there's even like a little square area. See, that would be the where the monk's mound is. There's even a little square area that was even more protected. And it was actually protected with like clay. So they think it was, it was fireproof. And it was like, wouldn't get damp either. So, uh, real cool. Um, there's a stockade, what they look like. I think they... Uh, they rebuilt it three different times because they could tell by the uh, wood and how it was all buried that they had a couple different styles that they used. But we get to check out this one once more. The Grand Plaza shows the area, the surrounding spot. And like I said, there's the fourth time, the one, two, three, four times that they did it. You know, just like any up, you know, just like any other thing, you're gonna have to have upkeep. You're gonna have to uh, redo it. But like I said, you'll see how high these pillars are whenever I'm standing by it. See, and this is something that's easy too. It's not like hard to get into. There's plenty of open spots. So it's like, even if you don't want to go into the museum, which it's free, so I don't see why you wouldn't. You could literally drive up here and look at it. Takes five minutes, then drive down to Woodhens, look at it, takes five minutes. I mean, this could be like a 30 minute field trip, you know, just for your kids. So if you're in St. Louis around the areas, literally you could just come up here, just check it out, you know? It's free. I'm, I'm mad at myself for it. I haven't brought my daughter here, which is like, I'm super embarrassed to say because I feel like I should have, you know? It's just such a great, you know, sometimes you just don't appreciate things whenever they're close to you. So, yeah, this is how big this wall is. And this is how it actually would have looked. Right now, if I was standing here, I'd probably have a spear thrown through me or something. But now I'm just looking at it. I got my GoPro like a, you know, real cool guy. So, all right, guys, thanks for checking this out. We're going to keep uh, keep going from here, though. But I want to just remind you, subscribe to the channel. If this helps you out, I just want to travel the planet, really, and just check out other areas find different things to do. I'm definitely an explorer type. So, uh, and hopefully make kind of educational videos. I know my videos aren't going to be as educational as maybe, um, if I would have just interviewed a person who works here. So maybe I'll do that next time. Just have somebody who's a, a, an, uh, a knowledgeable person or a reputable person. Maybe somebody from the museum explain the area a little bit better than I can, but at least here you had a first round walkthrough and I could kind of show you guys what it looked like. So now we're going to take the trail back to my motorcycle, hop back on there, and I'm going to show you guys Woodhenge, which is really cool. And I'll show you guys the little picnic site. So there's the museum. All right, guys, and now we're just going to, you know, finish this video up. At the end, I have like six or seven cool pictures that I just put up. But now this is just a motorcycle ride to see the different um spots that make up cokia mountain so we just left the museum and now we're gonna come up here here's the stockade wall which is really cool to check out you know you can snap some real cool pictures from that so you saw the museum the stockade wall there's monk's mound i'll stop right in front of that and then we'll check out Woodhenge at the very end and that's pretty much the main things to do at Cahokia Mountains, you know, the museum to really see what it looked like then to get a to learn a lot. You know, the museum is awesome. The stockade wall, because you get a lot of good information from that to really uh, get an idea of what it was. Monk's Mound, um, like I said, the largest um, earthen mound in the Americas, prehistoric, that is. So, you know, museum, stockade wall, Monk's Mound, and then the Woodhenge, which we're going to go to at the end. See that guy up there? He's running up it. A good workout, guys. Make sure you're staying healthy. Exercise, drink a lot of water, take some vitamins, get some good sunlight. Um, you know, it's always important. Mental health, physical health. And here is Woodhenge, which is a real cool thing to check out. Like I said, uh, this place is a, it's called the City of the Sun. As you can see, that huge sun in the background. And depending on where the sun was, they could see what time of year it was. They knew when the eclipse was. You know, this was a, uh, 
a different society and they were really connected to the earth as well as the moon as well as the sun so you could really get a glimpse of that and see how big the structure actually was you know i mean these are trees they'd cut down they'd place there was a significance here a lot of it we might not even know so hey thanks for checking out the channel hopefully you guys get to visit cahokia mountains by yourself if not hopefully you know this little first hand view hopefully it helped you know you got a good idea of the things so if you're near st louis or around the area come out here check out the cahokia mounds go up the st louis arch um you know look up the mississippi river yeah here's that cool stockade wall all right guys remember to subscribe to the channel check it out serving and swerving i'll be here for a while then i'll be in arizona you know just checking out the checking out the places doing the thing so if you liked what you saw subscribe and uh stick with it thanks guys and have a good day and enjoy the rest of your year thanks